everybody, it's Victoria here with a little talk today about energy systems of our body. The energy systems that are used to perform our daily activities or our training activities um, that our body has to tap into. So whether you know it or not, there are several and actually three different energy systems that our body uses while we are performing. Uh, most of the time they do tend to overlap but there are three separate energy systems that we'll be talking about. So energy system, so the skeletal muscle ability to perform work to sustain muscle contraction is dependent on the availability of adenosine triophosphate, which we call ATP, okay? So you'll see from here on out ATP is basically the availability of energy. So ATB, ATP's availability is a function of the muscle's fiber ability to synthesize ATP from macronutrients, which are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and resynthesize itself once it's been degraded. So these are the two ways that ATP is able to become available, whether it be from the intake of your foods or its, um, its ability to resynthesize itself at a cellular level. The three energy systems that our body has to tap into are the immediate energy system, the lactate, lactic acid energy system, and or the oxidative system. And in the next few slides, we're going to talk a little bit about each of these systems and how they work. So first off, the immediate energy system. This energy system is used for high intensity explosive activities. Only for very short in duration does your body or is your body capable to use this energy system. And I mean short, like 1 to 10 seconds, sometimes up to 30 seconds. So these are things like when you sprint or when you're doing weightlifting. Imagine your arms, how quickly sometimes they move up. It's not very long. It's not much longer than 1 to 10 seconds, right? You're not usually lifting weights. You're not doing one rep over 30 seconds usually. Sprinting, for an example, obviously, if you're going to sprint, quick sprint down the street, if it's up to uh, 10 seconds, up to sometimes 30 seconds, your body is using the immediate energy system. So this system is anaerobic and elactic. And I know many of you are familiar with the word anaerobic because we talk about it all the time. Um, but if you're not, anaerobic means that it does not rely on oxygen. Um, and in this case, this system degrades ATP and creatine phosphate, which are stored in muscle fibers. So that's how this system works, okay? Does not require oxygen to function. So how in the world do we fuel this system? Well, creatine monohydrate is a supplement that's very, very widely and commonly used and has been for many years. And this is one way that you can increase the, so the stores of your creatine phosphate. Um, you also can get creatine from different sources of foods. So as long as you're increasing it in some way or another, um, this will help your availability of creatine phosphate um, and the immediate energy system. If you think about it, you know, you're constantly regenerating at a cellular level all day. I'm talking about these big words and I can go really far in depth but I'm not going to. You're constantly regenerating ATP and creatine phosphate all day. Even things like when you stand up real quick and get out of a chair, that energy system is being used for that short burst of activity. Of course it's not like a, a workout type of activity but it doesn't have to be. That's what your body is using to create the muscle movement that's needed to do that activity. Okay, so it's really important to keep in mind when you're training this system in specific because this system is is one that's often overlooked because it's such short periods of time that we are doing an activity that sometimes people think it's not working or why are we doing that? That's stupid. We're not even spending any time doing it. You need to feel like you're like getting tired or something in order to feel like you got to work out and that's not true. So an example if you're practicing a high jump, if you're a high jumper or you want to jump higher and you're practicing your high jump, if you continually jump over and over and over, after a few jumps, 
like probably two, you're going to notice that your high jump is not as high anymore, right? It's much lower until the point where it's like barely even getting off the ground, right? If you continue on like this and you continue to do jump after jump after jump after jump after jump, your body's going to switch systems that are being used and you're going to start training more endurance wise. So is this productive? No, it's not. It's not productive if you're trying to train your immediate energy system or if you're trying to train to high jump or something that involves using this immediate energy system for your main performance goal. Um, this is why, and in a few more slides, you'll see why us coaches, we prescribe certain time lengths of breaks in order to give your body time to regenerate the ATP and creatine phosphate at a cellular level that's needed to perform those exercises at 100%. So basically here, you know, of course, we have, like I said, we have breaks that we'll be taking to be able to regenerate this, but also nutritionally, what will help me nutritionally in this immediate energy system? And one of the answers here is just intaking or making sure you're getting enough creatine monohydrate. On to the next system, the lactic acid energy system. This system is also for in, um, ac activities that are short in duration and are high intensity activities. Um, usually a trained individual can sometimes maintain this system up to two to four minutes. However, it starts to decline um, as far as performance or tap into the next system after sometimes 45 seconds, they start to blend. So um, for the lactic acid system, it has a larger fuel supply than the immediate energy system, which is why it can be maintained for longer. It relies on fast glycolysis which is the lactic acid energy system. Um, and carbohydrates, glucose, is the only nutrient capable of generating ATP through glycolysis. So that's why it's basically the glycolysis system. Um, therefore, carbs are your main source of fuel for these activities. In the system, the muscles take the glucose from the blood or break down stored glucose in the muscles to produce energy, the ATP. Okay. Um, one fun fact, that burning feeling that you get or that sore feeling, it is not lactate or lactic acid, what people always say, oh, I'm sore, I have so much lactic acid built up. It's not. Basically what happens is when you're working out, there's an increase in hydrogen ions um, that take place in your muscles because uh, oxygen is needed to break down the hydrogen ions. And when there's not enough oxygen in there to break it down, the hydrogen ions make the muscles more acidic and this muscle acidity is what creates soreness. So how does lactate or what does lactic acid actually do or why do people like have thought of this so many years of that lactic acid is the reason why? Lactate actually helps performance because it's a buffer to reduce the buildup of acids in the muscle. So it actually helps it. We actually want lactic acid or lactate to be in our muscles, to be able to perform longer um, because your muscles won't be as acidic. So why does this matter? The more you train this system, the more efficient it will become at reducing the acidity of the muscles. And then you'll be able to increase the time you're able to perform in this system. So if you're doing some sort of exercise or longer sprinting or longer running that's not endurance wise, um, and you want to do it for longer, we train this system so that way our, our la the lactate is able to break down the hydrogen ions and we're able to sprint for longer using this lactic acid energy system. So using a system that doesn't need oxygen to perform. Because once you need oxygen to perform, which is what we're going to talk about next, obviously it's a slower rate of transition, so your muscles are going to slow down because um, it, it takes a little longer for the availability. What will help me here nutritionally? A solid carbohydrate timing plan will help you here. How many carbs you're intaking based on a specific activity, when you're intaking those carbs based on that specific activity will help your muscles be able to have those carbohydrates as its main source of fuel to fuel you properly for these type of exercises. So now on to the last but not least energy system, the oxidative energy system. So. This oxidative energy system is the aerobic system. 
it's lower intensity exercises. You still need the ATP, but not at such a fast rate. So in this case, ATP is actually produced using oxygen, which is why it's called the aerobic system. Um, a lot of times we are told that we need to, or we use fat as a fuel during aerobic activity, which is true. We also use carbohydrates too, but when fatty tissues break down triglycerides, uh, fatty acids are then released into the blood. So the body will tap into these sources from the blood to generate ATP for cellular energy. Um, obviously, this is the aerobic system. It's used for longer duration of exercises. Uh, you start at the glycolysis level or what we talked about the last two slides. It cycles through those after a few seconds. And around five minutes is when you really start tapping into the oxidative system. It's when your body really starts using oxygen pretty much almost fully as its main source of fuel. So what will help me here nutritionally? Well, a solid overall nutritional plan based on your end goal, which includes carbs and fats and sometimes even proteins, depending on the length of your activity. So you can see that you know, the aerobic system starts working after five minutes almost, right? So if you're going out for an aerobic activity, and we're not talking about, you know, I'm going for a five-mile paddle or a 30-minute this and that. We're talking about very small periods of time here, up to five minutes, that use different systems and how you can help those systems work more efficiently. So here you, you can see an overview of the systems how long they last and how many minutes are needed for recovery in order for your body to turn over uh, whatever it might be using to be able to produce more so you can complete the next activity or the next set or the next rep. Um, the immediate energy system, which was the first system we talked about, which is either uh, using ATP or creatine phosphate, CP. It's an anaerobic system, remember? If you're using ATP, it's a three to five seconds activity. So think about what you do for three to five seconds. Maybe throw a ball, maybe do a power lift, maybe a quick sprint, one, two, three, done. Maybe a burpee. After that, you need one to three minutes of recovery in order to sustain, or I'm sorry, in order to regenerate more ATP to be able to perform the next set. Well, you just said a burpee. Well, what is that? I mean, I do like 10 burpees. That's like way longer than three to five seconds. Yeah, well, for the five to 10 seconds of activity, creatine phosphate. So now you can see you use the ATP up in three to five seconds. Now you're tapping into the creatine phosphate, which is five to 10 seconds of activity. Um, you would be doing more burpees in five to 10 seconds than three to five, right? So how can we help this system? Well, increasing our creatine stores would help this, would help your body function um, at a more efficient rate when doing these exercises. So after you do five to 10 seconds of activity, ideally you would take three to five minutes of recovery for the creatine phosphate at a cellular level to be able to regenerate and get you ready for the next set. I know these, this immediate energy system are really short burst energies. And it's not like you want to go out there all the time and just throw a ball and take one minute break. Throw a ball and take a one minute break. Or do two burpees and have to sit down for three minutes. But if your main goal is to train this immediate energy system, if you're a, long, a high jumper or something of that sort, you would want to take those amounts of recovery to get the most training for this system, if that makes sense. The lactic acid system is still anaerobic. It lasts two to four minutes, like we talked about before, and it typically needs 30 to 45 seconds of recovery. So after your two to four minutes, depending on your training level, you should take 30 to 45 seconds of recovery and then go ahead about your next set. This does not mean when you're going out for a five mile paddle the first two to four minutes. Yes, you are using your lactic acid system possibly if you get your heart rate up uh, in the two to four minutes, but the, this lactic acid system is really used for, like for an example, when you're doing your sprint intervals, two to four minutes, right? That's when you're gonna be using this system. And what do we do after we sprint usually? 
we sprint from point A to point B and we stop for X amount of time before we do the next sprint. This system is often what people use a lot because it's it's like a hit training type of activity. People uh, people like it. It's it's more fun. You feel like you've done a lot of work in a short amount of time, um, and you like that little period of rest. So a lot of times we spend training in this system for our own fun. If you're not following a uh, a training plan. This is all great and everything if you don't have any goals, but of course we also want to move on to the oxidative system, the aerobic system, and train that too because, let's face it, only training the lactic acid system is not going to help you aerobically. We still have to train aerobically. So basically, aerobically, it's pretty much limitless. Um, there's no recovery needed. The more you train aerobically, the longer you can go aerobically. So that's pretty much uh, the overview of how long the systems last, and some of the recovery that will benefit you the most when using these systems. So why in the world is this important as an athlete to understand? I mean, I'm not like going to school right now to study anatomy and physiology. Like, I don't understand why you just talked to me for the last five minutes or whatever it is about this. It's really important for you to understand these systems because even if you even if you don't want to make your own training plan or you don't make your own nutrition plan, you'll understand why us coaches do and why we're telling you to do a certain thing. So why are we telling you to take those long, boring breaks between certain sprint activities? That's why. We're trying to get the most use of our energy systems for our body to be able to perform the next set strong or stronger than the previous. It also will help you on how to properly fuel, and if you are using me as your nutrition coach, that's actually my job, but at least you'll know why I'm telling you to eat X, Y, and Z. Some people have weight loss goals, and that's fine, but when it comes to fueling you for your performance, it matters on the length, time, and intensity of your workout, depending on what you intake, your macronutrients. So it's basically just a little overview of our energy, uh, systems of our body and how we use them to perform these awesome activities that we do, especially paddle boarding. And I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit. Have a great day.